what is the adapter design pattern. So the adapter design pattern is a structural design pattern that allows you to adapt the interface of a component to an interface that a client expects without changing that component. Let's say a client wants to make a request to another component, but that component doesn't have the interface the client wants. You don't want to change the client, and you don't want to change the components as well. So you create an adapter in the middle to translate that communication, to adapt that communication. So the adapter needs to know how to make the request, right? Translate the client's request to the component, and also translate back the result to what the client wants. That is correct. I have found out that a very simple way to think about these things is with plugs and chargers and electricity. For instance, you have uh, a UK charger for your MacBook. You travel to Greece. Here uh, we have EU plugs. You can't plug your charger into yep. the EU plug. So what do you need? You need an adapter. Exactly. I have an adapter here right. that can convert any plug to any plug. That's, that's <laughs> a very valuable tool. Exactly. So the client, in this case, is your machine that you want to charge. That's it. So you need this adapter to convert the plug so you can charge the client, the machine. That's it, basically. Everyone is doing their job, but there is an incompatibility when you connect them. So you want to remove the incompatibility. And how do you do that? Create an adapter. Exactly. And we can follow the same principle in software. So a quote here, again, from Eric Evans in the Domain Driven Design book. An adapter is a wrapper that allows a client to use a different protocol than that understood by the implementer of the behavior. When a client sends a message to an adapter, it is converted to a semantically equivalent message and sent on to the adaptee. The response is converted and passed back. That's it. So that's it. When you have a matching interfaces, you put an adapter in the middle. The keyword is convert here. You just need to convert what the client expects with what the server provides. That's it. So you use an adapter when you want to use a component, but it doesn't expose the interface you want. For example, imagine you have a table view controller that expects to receive an array of view models to render on the screen. Mm -hmm. But the service providing the data returns a dictionary. Right. So here you have clearly an incompatibility between these two data structures. Yes. The view controller expects an array, but the service provides a dictionary. Yes. So you either convert the dictionary to an array of view models in the table view controller, or you make the service convert that data into view models before returning it. But if you do so, either the table view controller will be coupled with the service, or the service will be coupled with the view models. And usually you want services that are not coupled with the UI, with the presentation layer. Yes, usually yes. <laughs> and you also don't want your view controllers coupled with a service. So the solution is to put an adapter in between them. The adapter that will convert the request from the table view controller to the service. And when you get a response back from the service, it's gonna convert it to what the table view controller expects. And that's it. Then the table view controller and the service are much simpler, maintainable, decoupled, reusable. They are both replaceable and easier to test in isolation. The equivalent would be to buy a new MacBook in every new country you're going because sure. of the incompatibility with the charger. So you don't want that, right? You just you want to buy. <laughs> well, yeah. Good for you if, if you do. <laughs> you, what you want is just a small adapter that is going to make your MacBook charge and you can use it with a minimum cost. That's it. The adapter should be small. Not a lot of logic, just converting the messaging 